Greetings, everybody! Welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks, a YouTube channel dedicated to smartwatches, and today we introduce you to a new smartwatch company we have not seen here before, Sinbono. Say it with me. Sinbono. Very good, very good. As you can see, they're committed to providing customers with smartwatches and smart brands suited for all lifestyles, and we're going to show you this one, the Smart Life Sinbono V6. What's in the box? Well, new way of showing you. I got it on a tablet. Here's their page from AliExpress. It's really, really cool. This is a fun watch. Wait till you see this. It's got all these good things going for it. Blood pressure. It's got step count, sleep tracking, and the app that tethers with this is really interesting as well. We're going to take a look at that, the SmartBand V6. So let's dive into it inside the box. And it's already on, folks, because I've been playing with this one. I couldn't wait. We've got the, uh, the band itself. Look at the nice presentation they give you, too. Cute little uh, box with a plastic cover. Then we open it up and take the band out and look at the quality of this thing. This is top-notch quality, totally removable, dual color, TPU, very flexible bands. It's got a little cover that I've been so itching to take off, but I wanted you to see it. So the little button goes away, but you know it's down there, right? Inside the box, we have a charger alligator clip like this that connects to the two ports on the bottom see that there see that there line it up clip it on charge it up nice and solid connection that works perfectly i've already charged it all the way and we have a full color chinese and english manual now Look at this. Look at these screens. They are really like that. You're about to see some fun stuff. This, I think, is yet another future of watch technology in action. You know, when they first came out, it was just good enough to give you the numbers on the screen in a dull, soft blue. We all complained we couldn't see it outdoors, so they tried to make it brighter. Then they made it color. Then they made it icon-driven, and now you're about to see animation, icons, large screen display. Oh, my God. It, it's great. It's great. Um, okay, okay, there you go. There's the manual. Freeze frame it if you want to, to read everything about it. And then here's the Chinese version on the back side with a tethering app that we are going to show you here in just a few moments. But let's walk through the watch. You see it all light up? Now, it's really, really bright. This is... a uh, very viewable outdoors and it's in that twist to show the time and you're going to see this even as a calibration mode so it knows which way is up let's run through from hitting the button there's time then you go to this sports display it's showing your steps and your calories burned and your distance when and notice there's some animation going on here but it times out fairly quickly stop it when you hit it again we go into our sleep mode where you see last night's sleep information. Here is your heart rate measurement information page. And you see the little bar graph starting? It's accumulating heart rate data from when I've tested it there. And it's not testing it until I press and hold. Then you've got this training mode that you can go into a variety of training sources, of which I've done a few. I'll show you that. Notice the icon bounce whenever we come in here. We go over here to weather. This is the local weather forecast in centigrade in my area. Don't know how it's picking it up. I guess tethered to the watch because there's no Wi-Fi in here to do that. We've got uh, messages, any messages that come in with your tethered connection will show up here and be readable. Here's blood pressure, systolic, diastolic, and a bar chart that shows you the last seven readings. And again, just by pressing and holding, we can enter the mode to start recording. You've got blood oxygen. You can do the same thing here, record it on the watch or record it in the app. And now you've got, when you're tethered, the remote camera mode, so you can take a picture, you know, using your camera and use the button on the watch. 
You've got a music player that you can build in with this, but it'll play the music out of your phone, not out of the watch. And then you've got this other section, which we have to press and hold to get into, that shows you across the top all these buttons. There's a stopwatch, a mute off, an on, a reset, the overall power off, the brightness control, and the QR code that you want to scan to download DaFit. You could just go to the Google Play Store and look for DaFit as an app and download it directly because that's what we'll be tethering to. Press and hold to go back when you're there, and we loop back to time. Press and hold on time, and it gives you some information, shows you your battery level and your Bluetooth status. And if you get into the uh, further mode over here, where we are in the others, and go in here... Uh, as we went through, we've got all these different features. You can reset everything and just the brightness from here. And we aren't even full brightness yet. How do we do this? Do we just press and hold it? There we go. Okay, I'm bringing it up to full brightness, folks, so you get a feel for what that looks like. Now, if I press and hold it again, there, minimum, medium, and full. And full is really bright. It's like blooming on the screen. Okay, we're set at full brightness. That's what we want. Now we're going to come back. We're going to set this aside. There's this one watch face that I cannot change from the watch. But magic happens in the app on this one. Let's switch over and take a look at DaFit. So DaFit app is relatively new. Here's what it looks like. Tells you that basically you can use it to track and follow your health data day and night monitors and tracks sleep quality and so forth uh, latest update may 8th and uh, only 10,000 or so downloads so we're looking at a new app we haven't seen before get an idea of the pages in chinese here's the pictures it's relatively simple and nice layout smooth and easy you've got all of these areas you can identify your band by color, and of course it works with several different bands. And you have these icons across the bottom. So, let's hop into this and look at it for real. I haven't had to set up an account or anything. I just went straight in. I went over here. I actually went over here to identify my particular unit, the V6. And we'll get back to all of these things on the home page. It does the layout and information of what's actually on the band. So if you recall, we had 1,700 steps in our sports area, and that's what's showing here. When you go into it, you see when it's been accumulated, and it was today on Wednesday, and you can learn about activity and your performance for the last seven days are here, and a kind of a ranking against other people that 13% of the people go farther, and I haven't basically done anything. So most of us are sedentary, but you can shoot for that upper goal of 18,000 steps a day if you want to. And when we leave the step area, you get into sleep. Haven't done any sleep with it, just got it in. But you'd have your graph of all your sleep information, your overall quality of sleep score, and your last seven days sleep trend. We'll let you explore that on your own, see what that all looks like. After sleep, we have a full-time heart rate area. Now, this is really fun. You've got your uh, bar graph every half hour, I believe. It's checking you. It shows you your highest and lowest rates and your average. And it's also showing you, over time, throughout the day, the zones that you are exercising in uh, and, and the amount of time. And then it gives you a little discussion about heart rate analysis and, again, a graph of your last seven days. So the app is really meant for you to work with yourself over time in both uh, exercising, sleeping, and heart rate. These last things, your actual individual heart rate, individual blood pressure, and individual blood oxygen. You're seeing a few of them on here because um, I've done a few of these on my own. Let's take heart rate, for example, at first. Shows you that at 62 beats when this was taken, it's in the light area. These are the last seven heart rate readings I've done. And if 
I bring you this over and I hit the word measure, it'll light up, automatically go to the blood, to the heart rate um, uh, area. The icon is bouncing up and down. We've got the full operation on the watch there. It just flashed and gave us 65. And it shows the latest heart rate. And we've added another data point to the total. That's our heart rate area. Blood pressure now, a little bit different. Here's our last couple of times is all I've done it. But I can hit measure on here. And again, it's going to go into that particular mode. It talks about learning about blood pressure, that your systolic and diastolic uh, ranges are typically here. And it's showing with a little green arrow where I am based on my uh, information and needs in terms of heart of blood pressure, right? The last one I got was 115 over 70, and that's showing right there. When this one is completed, and it does take longer, I'm now at 119 over 68. Shows you on the chart, shows you at the top, and it's showing this latest reading and where it falls into the overall um, zone. Then you have your blood oxygen. And again, it talks about what blood oxygen does and is about and uh, your last seven times trend and I can measure that this is a quick one doesn't take very long and you can see the number pop up here as soon as it comes up usually from about 96 to 98 is is a, a good range and you see it's in the green zone there when you fall lower then the blood oxygen is going to go uh, down into these zones something to good keep uh, track of when you're exercising heavily and then there's more training data that you have here where you have the actual events. Oh, I didn't show you all of those. When you get into the different events, you can time yourself and, and uh, get this kind of data. In the swimming area, I played with it for 40 minutes. I wasn't really swimming. It was only calculating your consumption and your average heart rate. But look at this. It's getting your heart rate regularly over that period. I took the band off and didn't wear it just to see what would happen during a part of the training. And sure enough, it fell to zero. I like that. It means it's not giving you erroneous data. It can tell whether or not it's on your arm. I wasn't exercising a lot, so I'm only in the light zone. This is just to show you characteristically what the app would look like. And here's some information about that. So for swimming, you're not getting a lot except your underwater heart rate, I guess, and uh, supposedly calories burned based on some calculation, probably related to heart rate. Now, on the other one, this one was a uh, walking exercise for a half an hour, putting in 818 steps, mileage, and consumption with a speed, pace, and average calculated. There's no GPS on this, so it's uh, doing it basically off of your uh, step count. Here again is the heart rate data is a little more active now because I literally was moving, uh, but I didn't pop into the weight zone and learning about heart rate data analysis. And then you've got that, which I guess lets you go back to your overall list. And we looked at those two items as well. So that's the training data. And this is your entire daily synopsis. Each of these are accessible. This is your information for the watch itself. And now that we're here, we can check it out. We have this particular watch face on here, but I can change it to that watch face if I want to, or even this watch face. Really slick, huh? And I presume as they add watch faces, you could have different ones uh, show up. I don't think there's a way you can install your own, but you can certainly take their defaults, of which they have three, for, the, for the, uh, this particular V6 watch. You can set up your notifications here now of which things you'd like pushed to the watch from these choices. And there's a lot of them, including others. And I imagine others is everything else on your phone. <laughs> Push notifications will work after you actively turn it on. And so you've got to go in and give uh, Fit permission to send information to you. And now all the other things that you've got on your watch, on your phone, could be pushed to your watch. And of course, you could turn on the uh, push for phone information. 
your text messaging, and any of the other social media sources you would like. Here's where you can set alarms. You can do the remote shutter from here. Now we're taking a picture from the watch. So if I'm wiggling that and I touch the button, it took a picture of that, I guess. Oh no, it switched this into a different thing, player. I think you have to uh, press and hold when you're in that mode. Wow. There, I pressed and hold. Three, two, one, and then it, wow, takes a picture with sound and everything. That's how that thing works. Others is finding your device. It's vibrating right now. I feel that. Whoops, I don't want to be in the picture. You can change your time format. Do not disturb zones. Uh, time frames, reminders to move. That's the sedentary. Here I've got turned on the all date heart rate measurement, which it's doing. And of course, you can change your languages. These are the supported languages on this one. And that will change the language on the watch. Quick view is on. Valid period, start and end time. I do not know what quick view is. You can customize the effective period of quick view. And here's the calibration I was telling you about. It says to remove the watch band and uh, lay it flat on a table. And you see the thing that they've got looks like a different kind of a watch band um, than what we are using, but it works for all of them. And that, I believe, calibrates so it knows which way is up when you twist it up. And then you start calibration and it sets that for you. So if it's not lighting properly when you turn it, then you can fix that. You can also turn on weather and it'll check every hour automatically for weather on the watch. That is here. Upgrade checks your firmware and will upgrade it if you need it. And your last tab is basically your own profile, which you put that information. And I believe that will help calculate your zones for your heart rate your overall step goal, and an about. And you can upgrade to beta. Hmm, I'm not going to do that yet. But there's the defit um, information in the about. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you back on the band itself, we'll actually go back to there for today, was this uh, information when you come over here in your sports area, no, not that one. That's just your basic step count. That's your sleep time, your heart rate, your training. This is it. You press and hold on the training. Now, you see all the dots across the top. These represent all the different exercise uh, modes you can go into. You could do walking or running, cycling, skipping, badminton, basketball, football, and here's swimming. So, what I did is I went into walking. Let's take a look at running, which is similar, press and hold. And you notice you've got these different data areas that are going to accumulate on your watch when it leaves that mode and goes into the time and stops showing that. You can just tap it and come right back into that mode again. When you are done, and it's nice that it gives you the time real quick too. When you're done, you just simply press and hold and you're in a pause mode. You can pause it or you can stop it, or you can go out of here. If I want to pause it, I press and hold, and it's now paused. So you can take a break, whatever you need to do. The watch will go back out again, turn off, save battery, come back in, you're in pause mode, press and hold. You can activate it again, and leave the pause mode, and now it's ticking. And of course, when you're done, you simply toggle over, Hit the stop by holding it, and you're out of running. And the same goes for all of these different ones. In terms of cycling, that's what it looks like. You get your heart rate, calories burned, and a timer. Because remember, there's no GPS in here. It's basing its distance on pedometer, and you don't have that with cycling and basketball and all the others. So only your running and walking are going to show you those things. Press and hold, toggle, press and hold and you leave that particular mode. To get out of all of this, you go to the back button and come back home. And then, of course, you can go through all the other things too, including your weather. So what are we looking at? We're looking at the V6. And the V6 is a really, really fun general purpose sports fitness watch with heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen, 
with a variety of sporting activities, with the ability to calculate your um, distance traveled and your calories burned and all of that with a nice interface to an app that accumulates that over time and shows you all that across different categories. And it's available from our newest partner, Sinbono. Welcome, Sinbono. Glad you're here. You're going to see several watches from these guys. They've already sent out a whole bunch. I've got at least one, two, two of them here. Another one's on the way. So we'll be looking at a few new uh, new creations that you haven't seen before. And some you have maybe uh, rebranded under Sun Sin Bono. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Show some love. Check these guys out. See if there's anything you like on their website or pick up this one. We'll see if we can get a discount for you. And we will see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Okay, this doesn't have anything to do with the V6 directly, but check it out. This is the charging connector for the V6 that clips on into those two holes like that. This is the LEM7 that sits on its dock like that. This clip has the connectors that match up perfectly with the buttons on the LEM7. So, will it charge it or won't it? The first 10 of you to guess, I'll summarize and we'll see what you say, and then I'll tell you in the show notes whether or not we have a solution to charging the LEM7 without the dock by using the charger from the V6. What do you think? Let us know.